and welcome to another episode of WJ Live, powered by the Western Journal. I'm Michael Austin, the supervising rep- the supervising reporter here at the Western there Journal. There we go, you got it. You know, I'm good at writing things. I'm not quite good at actually presenting them on screen. <laughs> um, I'm flanked on both sides by two lovely ladies. We got Tara Snyder, assignment editor extraordinaire. That's how I always introduce her. Yep. And Abby Liebing, our investigative reporter. Normal, not extraordinary. Yeah. Rude and to assume our gender as well. For you, I'm, I'm, I think we're all very excited to do today's episode for you guys. So last night, Joe Biden did this interview with Lester Holt, uh, NBC News, I believe, yeah. correct? Yeah. NBC yeah. News. And um, NBC News actually did a pretty good job. Basically, the idea of the interview was hey, Joe. You suck in these like five areas. How about you tell us why you're sucking in these five areas? Yeah, it's a good format. <laughs> and the president tried to defend himself, and we're gonna, pr- you know, we're gonna share some of what he said to defend some of his horrible policies on inflation, on Afghanistan, Ukraine, um, masking, and COVID. And we're gonna explain to you why he's full of BS. He has, you know, he has no idea what he's talking about. Um, and you know we're gonna we're gonna expose that for you, and that's what we want to do here at the Western Journal to give you the truth. And the first part of that is we're going to talk about um, kind of some of the things that Biden has said about masking and COVID. And so Lester Holt, good old COVID, <laughs> good old COVID. Lester Holt during the interview um, was asking Biden, "Hey, what about masks? Are you gonna roll back any of these policies? You know, people are starting to get pretty anxious. They're not liking these policies." And here, we're going to pull up a clip for you now. Here's kind of what uh, Biden had to say back to that. Omicron and the variant variants have had a profound impact on the psyche of the American people. Should children be required to wear masks in schools? Well, look, when I got in office, only 46% of the schools were open. Now 98% of them are open and they're wearing masks. What's happening is every day that goes by, children are more protected. We're now... Every day that goes by, children are more protected. What do you guys do? You guys do you think children are more protected? What do you guys think? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. Short and simple. No. So, so like this many months in, we're starting to see the effects of what it's like uh, for children to be masking for so long, to not have social interactions with other people, to not you know read facial expressions as they're you know growing and developing as human beings. And I looked through all the research that's just kind of come out in the last few weeks, you know, maybe a month or two. So we are seeing massive speech delays in kids. We're seeing lower reading scores, you know, lower scores in general across the board. Mm -hmm. Um, Part of that has to do with uh, remote learning as well. Right. Um, Social isolation, depression, anxiety, other developmental delays, like, you know, emotional developmental delays. And, you know, these two also... um, these two plastic sur- surgeons from Europe, they're starting to hypothesize that, you know, if you have two, ma- if uh, two young of kids are wearing too tight of masks for too long, they start to get protruding ears. Ah, uh, so we're, we're making a bunch of which, ugly kids. <laughs> <laughs> we're making a bunch of ugly kids, which is the least of all those problems I listed, but still, you know, physical issues, emotional is- issues, uh, psychological issues, social issues. Like we, children are not safer. And, and this should all be, you know, we should take into consideration with all that, that they have almost zero chance of dying from COVID. Exactly. You know, the flu is more dangerous. Yeah. Um, it's, it's ridiculous what Biden is doing. Right. So now they have zero chance of, almost zero chance of dying from COVID. <laughs> but like, you know, 50% spike in, liter- in illiteracy and things yes. like that. So it's yeah. like, it's always a question of like, well, do the benefits outweigh the costs? Yeah. And, you know, my my wife um, works in behavioral therapy, and so she works a lot with kids that do, you know, they have speech issues, speech delays, um, you know, kids with autism and things like that. And this is just having them mask, having those kind of kids that, you know, they need a little extra help to get on to, you know, becoming, to develop as members of society. Mask, it completely stunts their development in in ways that we we probably won't even comprehend for decades. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's complete. Well, it's like even if you take someone who's like, you know, neurotypical or what have you. Yeah. You're seeing the same delays um, 
there to you're seeing like similar kind of delays so it's it's only expected that someone who you know has more barriers you know to being able to yeah to, to speak right. is going to obviously have a, a harder time with it and so it's just amazing to me that we're able to overlook all of these huge problems we see like with teenage girls these yes. exponential suicide right. rates anxiety depression and all of these things and just people who like younger kids who are in school especially when it gets to elementary school kids and so when you when you see that you're robbing kids of almost their childhoods where they have to sit six feet apart for lunch and they yeah. can't really play in the playground together and they're taping off swings like people are going to grow up and remember that <laughs> yeah. and they're going <laughs> to look right. back at the data from all of this and you and they're going to go you're yeah. going to tell me that as a child with no underlying health conditions, like nothing at all, and I had practically practically a 0% chance of death, that like two years of my childhood was just completely robbed when it's already yes. probably 10 years max. Exactly. And it's just, it's a complete just ignoring of common sense. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're teaching a little kid how to speak, what do they need? They need to be able to see your mouth. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you're teaching them how to read, they need to be able to clearly hear you and see your expressions. And it's like, it's every little detail along the way. And it's not like students are like, oh, I want to wear a mask. It's just, it's blatant ignoring of absolute common sense. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, going off on that common sense thing, also, another way that this is completely harming children in the worst possible ways is... um. The Wall Street Journal released a report. It was authored by this public health expert um, researcher. And I believe it's a she. I'm not quite sure. It's kind of a gender. Aaron, E-R-A-N, uh, Ben David. So sorry, Aaron, if I offended you by using <laughs> the wrong gender. Um, you know, it could be a she and she still wants to be a he. So I don't know. Hey, you never know. <laughs> I mean, it's your fault for calling your name. I don't even so know why I'm going out of my way to worry about this. But... Basically, what um, that Wall Street Journal report found is that by being so intensely um, uh, in just cleaning, uh, the intensification of hygienic policies by, you know, all the masking, cleaning everything so thoroughly, mm -hmm. kids aren't building up their immune systems. There's going to be severe health consequences for that in the future. Yeah. Um, increasing rates of asthma, allergies, type 1 diabetes, Crohn's disease, and other diseases with significant autoimmune components to them. And that's just another thing that, like, you could have asked anybody. Well, yeah. And that's yeah. common sense that kids need to get a little sick sometimes to build yeah. up that immunity. Yeah, kids are meant, like, as little human beings, they're meant to be, like, rolling around in the dirt <laughs> and falling off of rocks. Right. And because that's how you build everything in your body. It's how you build your immunity, your sensory perceptions, yes. your mobility. And it's like they have to have to have access to all of that. Yeah. Um, or else, duh, they're not going to develop. <laughs> Yeah. And so, you know, why why is Biden sticking with these policies when they, we know they do so much harm? Well, in this next clip, we're going to show you he kind of explains his thinking behind staying behind this stuff. Are you afraid, though, that some states and, and cities are moving too quickly to loosen indoor mask mandates? Well, you know, it's uh, I I committed that I would follow the science, the science as put forward by the CDC. And the, and, the, and the federal people. And uh, I think it's probably premature, but it's, you know, it's, it's a tough call. The science put forward by the CDC and the federal people. Yeah. Who are the federal people, by the way? <laughs> Who are the federal people? Who well, are they? Well, I would assume it's Biden and Fauci and all of those fun folks. Um, if the science is only put forward by two groups, it's not actually science. That's not yeah. exactly how that works. Well, yeah, and it's just, it's dumb, too, because didn't the CDC basically say unless you're wearing a KN95, masks are right. pretty much useless? Right, yeah. So, and then it's like you look... That's a great yeah. point, Tara. And yeah. It's like you look at these, like, kindergartners, and you're stressing them out. I mean, first of all, take take go into any room of kindergartners and tell them to sit still for an hour. That's your first issue. It's impossible. You want kindergartners yeah. to sit still for an hour? Oh, and then also, like, keep your face mask on and do whatever. It's like kindergartners fidget. They don't know how to contain themselves. They don't know how to do anything. Yeah. And so you're just putting all of these kinds of constraints on it. You know, it's it's just ridiculous. And that's the thing that, like, just makes me so mad about this video is that the CDC literally said, unless you're wearing a KN95, then you're basically, it's not really doing anything. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you're not right. even following the science. Be like, 
oh yeah, I mean they're not really helping. Yeah. At least, if you go, at least they're not really helping uh, that much. But working and getting can ninety fives, which would still be ridiculous, but at least consistent with yeah. what the CDC actually says. You know, I don't know. That's yeah. My little the you know I've said from the beginning, and you know we've known we've known about a lot of this masking stuff from like pretty early on. And mm-hmm. it's just now that the CDC has come around to it. Two um, years later, folks. You know, City <laughs> Journal, they had kind of one of their public health experts do a, a rundown of basically all of the scientific literature, all the studies that the CDC was using to base its recommendations on. And, you know, none of them had that much long-term, sus- long-term um, sustainable, like it, it just... They weren't concrete studies, and right. there were plenty of other studies that you could point to that were just as you know reliable that were saying the opposite things about masking. So right. it's this was never you know trusting the CDC science is not trusting the CDC science. Trusting the CDC science is trusting the opinions of a certain group of people that all have their own biases and all have this just certain particular expertise that you know. They, they should not have the right to be, you know, making policy proposals. Right. And I mean, that's the whole problem that with COVID that has been going on for yeah. two years now is that everyone knows there is no concrete science Yeah. Um, because you have to have data, which means yeah. you have to gather data, which means you need more time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but what happens is that you have people parading around absolutely secure um, in these insecure scientific yeah. ideas um and trying to make policies off them it's yeah. just it's absurd well and the thing too that i just want to point out for the future is now you're going to have an entire generation of people like millennials gen z the kids yeah. who are in elementary school you're going to have all of them like a whole swath of them being ten thousand times more skeptical of the cdc <laughs> and the who and all of these recommendations oh, yeah yeah and so it's like you have people with like lower immune systems like like lower experience, you know, just surviving yeah. in general. And then it's like, you better hope that something doesn't happen within the next 80 years or so, or there isn't another disease or something that hits yeah. because people are immediately going to go, no, we remember what you did last time. And you kind of made a mountain over a molehill. And that's not me trying to like diminish the pain that COVID has caused because obviously a lot right. of people Yeah, it's died. caused a lot of but deaths. We're, we, can't, we can't live two years on when people have the opportunity to be vaccinated and all this yeah. stuff where yeah. everyone's still on lockdown two years later, basically. Right. Everyone needs to wear a mask. Everyone needs to yeah. be careful. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, like we were talking about, the problem that led to this was Biden. It's not that Biden's listening to the experts. It's that he's listening to his handpicked few, you know, his selection of experts. And that led to a lot of problems. It led to COVID. It led to the masking problems. And it led to a lot of foreign policy, just absolute disasters in Afghanistan. (laughs) And it looks like with Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. Lest you forget, uh, (laughs) World War III could... (laughs) <laughs> might be on the horizon. Yeah. And that is 100% Biden's doing. Um, unless you forget, a bunch of Americans are still stuck in Afghanistan. Yep. And a bu- and several of them died trying to get out. Again, all on Biden. Yes. But he could not... Uh, it was painful to watch him in this NBC interview because mm. he... It was just like he was being confident in all the wrong answers and then bumbling about. And it it was it's just painful. So um, take a look, especially at this first clip where uh, Lester Holt brings up uh, Ukraine since, you know, the U.S. has troops over in Eastern Europe now. What are your plans toward American citizens who are in Ukraine and might be there during an invasion? What scenarios would you put American troops to rescue and get Americans out? They're not. That's a world war. When Americans and Russians start shooting at one another, we're in a very different world than we've ever been in. Not even on behalf of simply evacuating Americans? No. How how, how do you do that? How do you even find them? This is not like I'm hoping. Yeah, so congratulations (laughs) if you're in Eastern Europe and you're American. (laughs) It's just over for you. <laughs> how, do you how do you even find them? Well, it's not like I'm the president of the United States. They don't even like know that. you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that he asked him like, okay, so how about getting people out? And he's like, well, we can't start firing shots. That'd be World War Three. Like, I don't think he asked you that, Joe. No, no, we're just asking about getting people out. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. Interesting reaction. No. Well, the the yeah. funny thing is that the White House has issued, I think, at least two or three statements um warning americans in ukraine and eastern europe to get out but just completely leaving it on them like yeah you better get out 
<laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like when your parent sets a curfew. It's like you better be back by midnight. <laughs> this is the time I have. Well, it's like it's like the parents that you know will never actually do anything. They're yeah. just like, hey, yeah, it's like the wink do it, the please. Nod. Yeah, <laughs> but it's yeah, like, if you want to. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's you know, obviously, I think most conservatives do not want a World War Three. No, but you know we. <laughs> There has to be some mobilization. There has to be some planning. You know, from what he's saying here, there's no plan. Like, oh, what could I do? How do I even find them? Like, I don't know. Oh my God. <laughs> Please, at least tell us you're working on something to help Americans well, in danger, it's like, Joe. If you, if you screw it up the second time around, like with Afghanistan, <laughs> right? And then you screw up Ukraine, which isn't yeah. even probably comparable. You yeah, know, I, oh, I mean, ridiculous. yeah, to have it to have it twice on your watch would just be so incredibly painful. Yeah. It's just, and maybe that's why he's just completely not even thinking about it yeah. because he's like, mm, can't you know, can't have bad luck that bad twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with Biden, you yeah. never know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. with Biden, well, I yeah. mean, he's had a terrible streak in every aspect of foreign policy so far. No. So it's just unbelievable and. Lester Holt, of course, you know, bringing up Ukraine, then it naturally leads to Afghanistan. Um, there was an army report that the Washington Post got a hold of um, about high ranking military personnel who talked about the evacuation from Afghanistan. Um, and a couple of them very specifically blamed the administration for just how badly it went. Um, and said, you know, sorry, the administration was real dumb for not seeing the Taliban coming yeah. quicker. <laughs> yeah. So Lester Holt brings that up with Biden, and he's just like, deer in the headlights, complete deer in the headlights. On the subject of American citizens, I have to draw your attention to that Army report, an investigative report that's come out about the lead up to the withdrawal from Afghanistan. It, it interviewed many military officials and officers who said the administration ignored the handwriting on the wall. Uh, another described trying to get folks in the embassy ready to evacuate, encountering uh, you know people who are in, essentially in denial of, of this situation. Does any of that ring true to you? No. No. That's not what I was told. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. That's not what I was told. Uh, yeah. No. And then it's like loading. Like you get the loading. Table. Oh, but just to like emphasize the ridiculousness of that statement, like so, yeah, that report, you know, that's that's been verified. Like that's a hundred percent true. Like there were uh -huh. so many people in the military, you know, in in the federal government that were warning him about this, and you know, the previous administration. People could say what they want. You know, there's been a lot of people right after it happened, a lot of leftists that were saying, oh, well, Trump kind of created this. And then, you know, there was no way we could have pulled out. Because Trump um, created everything bad. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, Trump had a, a, you know, it probably wouldn't have been perfect. There would You would have seen, you know, some serious problems. But a very, you know, staged, well-planned, you know, multiple stages to this plan of evacuating, you know, make sure all the weapons get out or get destroyed, make sure all Americans are out, and we still have military presence during all those steps. Uh, then we slowly start to pull back. Right. And, you know, everyone from that administration, there's people within Biden's administration, you know, that report really revealed a lot that everyone knew this was going to be a disaster if you just pull everyone out to, 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 to hit some arbitrary deadline. Like, yeah. there was no reason except for that. It was a made-up deadline. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the sad reality is that no matter how the evacuation was going to go, it was going to be dangerous. Yes, Even that's true. Even if it was very carefully planned. Yep. But, like, on the scale of carefully planned, <laughs> still dangerous to well, let's just fly by the seat of our pants, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of room <laughs> that could have gone in between, and we just went all the way to, like, let's just fly by the seat of our pants on this. Yeah, well, and it's, it's so dumb because it's, like, every single time they retreated, they would, like, take over, you know, a city, and it was, like, you're watching it in real time. So it's like you would think like every time that you're drawing back people and yeah. you're seeing just utter disasters. And the other thing um that that we that I was or I put a story together on the other day was that people came out who's the the commander who was in charge of getting people out of Afghanistan yep. in Kabul uh came out and oh, said right. uh hey when we were trying to pull people out the the Biden admin was calling in special favors from people and Congress people were calling in special favors to get select people out. But yeah. sorry if you're the family that the state department hung up on. Cause we did a story on that. Yes. Too, you know? Yep. <laughs> so, yep. There's right. a, yeah, it's there's like, a guy, oh, sorry. he was an interpreter for us for a very long time. He worked with our armed forces, you know, at, at, you know, at the risk of his own life, you know, the Taliban wants, wants to behead people that do those things. 
he did all of that, and we left him behind. And he he found out we were evacuating when he was watching the news. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sure so, did. you know, all kinds of stuff like that was happening. Yeah, there's still probably at least 900, probably closer to a thousand or more. Yeah. Um, either interpreters or actual American Ameri- citizens yeah. who are in Afghanistan and they want out. Yeah. Yeah. It's not happening. Yeah. And that's, you remember Jen Psaki just a few, like maybe a month or two ago, was saying, well, if they want out, they can get out. And it's like, <laughs> no, mm, they can't. Maybe not. <laughs> that's yeah. a lie. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but what's hilarious is just how how inane his answers are to this. It's yes. just like, no. He digs his heels in on the <laughs> worst thing to dig your heels in. Yeah. I mean, he could have answered in a lot of different ways. He could have yeah. beaten around the bush. Could have apologized. No, he's, yeah, he's not doing a great... He's not very sharp right now. But he just said, it's... I wasn't told that. Like, he's a 12-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I honestly think that one of us three probably could have sat there and given better oh. off-the-cuff answers than him Oh, yeah. Than him oh, yeah. Too. Like, it's not... Like, I don't know. I mean, politicians all lie for a living, so I just think it would have been easier to lie in a very pretty way than blatantly look like yeah, a Yeah, good, good old Joe's past his politician prime, and yeah. even at his prime, he was never that great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, so. it's, it, it is a little sad in some ways because he used to be, I mean, he was never incredible, but even yeah. in his good days, he was pretty whimsical. Yes, um, yes, and absolutely. Like, and really fun in his interviews and things like that. And you're yeah. Like, it's all gone. Now he's sitting there going, no. That's not yep. <laughs> that's not my bad. I wasn't told yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, and then he goes on to blame and just reject this army report, which is hysterical and yeah. just awful. So that's the next clip we have for you. I just want to clarify, are you rejecting the conclusions or the, the accounts that are in this army report? Yes, I am. So they're not, not true. I'm rejecting them. I'm rejecting that. And, I reject my and own there you have it. I reject my own intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those people suck. I don't know what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. I, I reject the military commanders that I <laughs> the put military. there. That's that's yeah. so I true. I reject the military. Um, it's it's incredible. Like, and this is this is the whole interview. You know, they went over a lot of things. Afghanistan. You know, this. There was a few other things we're not covering that they went over, but it's just. Yeah, like I said, great interview, great job from NBC News. You know, basically, Biden, why do you suck? Mm-hmm. Um, and the next big one was inflation. Yeah, inflation. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really, really bad. And they're going to – we have a video where we kind of cropped it and just talk about how bad things are. But it's hitting a 40-year 40, a 40 high, and uh, Lester made sure to hit him on this too. And we're – I think it was back in July you said inflation was going to be temporary. I think a lot of Americans are wondering what your definition of temporary is. Well, you're being a wise guy with me a little bit, uh, and I understand that's your job. So, yeah, just before that, they went and showed that actually Americans, the average American, could expect to have um, $250 basically missing from their accounts now um, yeah. Under President Joe Biden, which is a significant chunk of money. Like, that's a lot yeah, of money so, for the average American right. to be losing. Um, and every month. Yeah, They're losing every, that every month. Every yeah. single month. And so it's just amazing, too, because simultaneously along with that, you see people whose rents are skyrocketing all over. Like, I see that every day. Like, people's yeah. rents are increasing. The cost of living is going up. It's just it's just a utter nightmare. And to just have Joe Biden be like, you're, you're being a wise guy. It's like, okay, yeah, well, Joe Biden and any other person in the room is going to yeah. be a wise guy next to him. Like, Yeah. <laughs> and, and his reasoning is like, oh, well, there's, well, inflation's not really my fault. You know, there's supply chain issues. You know, certain products aren't being made, and then that clogs up kind of the whole economy. Yeah. And then, you know, prices get higher, and we just need to print off more money. And, and Abby, does it that... Doesn't- Work. Does, does that does it work like that? Because no. I'm not sure. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> I am here to give you a very quick one sentence econ 101. <laughs> Inflating the economy further by, it, by pumping money into it does not yeah. work. A lot of people yeah. will call it transitory inflation or what's known as healing inflation. It's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a made up concept to try to justify when you're paying extra money at the gas pump and at the grocery store yeah. and for your yes. renting costs. It does not help things. And like I know a lot of our viewers, a lot of our readers um and pretty much everybody on the left 
thought that it was just an amazing idea to give out those stimulus checks multiple times throughout the pandemic. And look, I understand where you're coming from. The government, you could feel like the government owed you something because they took a lot away. But, you know, this is the consequence. And, you know, there's plenty of other exorbitantly huge bills that have contributed to inflation. That's for sure, because they've had to print off money to pay for them. But, you know, those stimulus check payments, you know, that has led, that has helped lead to you paying more for all of this stuff. You know, we talked on this show way back then that, hey, this is going to be the cost of your stimulus check payment. Is that like a year from now, two years from now, you're going to be, everything's going to cost more. So just keep that in mind. And yeah, people are spending more than they got from that yeah. so you know was it worth it i'm not sure right i mean like congratulations you got you know 1400 bucks or whatever yeah. you i'm sorry but you blew through that a long yes. time ago yes yeah that's gone <laughs> like yeah. it's gone it was pretty much gone as soon as you got yeah. it the stimulus you know anytime you get the government to give you a bunch of something they are printing off money and they're they're essentially stealing from you they're stealing the value of the dollar and then they're making everything cost more right um, and it's just that like, people just don't get that. They, they, they're, they're taxing you without taxing you. That's what they're doing. Exactly. That's what they've always done. It's not just Biden and it's not just Democrats, to be honest. No, they it's, just, they always do this. They steal from you constantly by just p- getting these giant bills and, oh, we'll just print off money to pay for them. And then they benefit and all of us have to pay for it. Yeah. And people, yeah. and people will try and advocate and say, Oh, you never can see any real world consequences. And that's kind of that's kind of what I think a lot of people have come to view, like just debt in general with the, like, yeah. the trillion dollar debts and things like that. A lot of times you see that the same thing with like student loans, like when people are taking out student loans, mm-hmm. they're like, right. Oh, that that's like that's a future problem. I'm not probably gonna deal with that right away. It's gonna yeah. it's not gonna be here. And now here we are with these with these debts and with these stimulus check snowballs where it's like okay, now that little snowball is now an avalanche and we all have to deal with it. Yeah. Right. Yep. And it, it just, it's such flawed thinking. And I don't, I don't know why, but the average American just like does not seem to understand that when the government is spending money, it's not some like private government money fund. Yeah. <laughs> the government is fueled off of taxpayer dollars. So yeah. every single time they spend money on anything, it does eventually go back to, uh, it, it's traced back to the individual. Um, and yep. to think in those terms will completely change your thinking <laughs> about, <laughs> about everything yep. that goes on in the economy and Biden's real dumb answers to, well, inflation's just going to go away. It's not how it works, guys. It's not and, how it works. And it's just, it's just truly spectacular how, you know, wrapping all of this stuff up together, how disastrous this presidency has become. You know, I imagined what I'm sure I don't know what you guys thought, but when when he first was becoming president, when he first, you know, we were getting into January, I was like, okay, he's going to try to be a little more moderate. You know, I'm not going to like it. There's going to be a lot of bad stuff, but this is going to kind of suck, but it'll be all right. And man, you know, it's been getting worse and worse. And about when Afghanistan hit, that's when I think everyone was realizing this is going to be one of the worst presidencies in American history. It's a long time. And we are only, what, a year and a couple weeks a couple weeks yeah yeah well i think too for me um just you know because i think you guys were probably we were all super young and 9-11 happened so i don't know if you guys even remember yep Uh, i'm the old one here so yeah yeah. do you remember a little bit yeah Yeah, i remember 9-11 i had no idea like i i think i was a year old so when when you see that video of the plane (laughs) wow (laughs) yeah (laughs) (laughs) sorry the plane and there's people like literally climbing onto yeah. the plane to yeah. just to escape and then you see it in the sky and people falling at least for me because i've seen the footage of 9-11 but watching that the day that that was occurring like for me like just seeing yeah. the desperation in people mm-hmm. that was super super chilling and i think for me that's like probably one of the biggest political moments that i can actually remember and was actually yeah and you know there wasn't a lot you know in in the time since then you know the political moments weren't as intense and then we have you know afghanistan which was not nearly the same you know in level of intensity but still it was kind of another one of those historical moments those historical Mm -hmm. hallmarks of like this is a tragedy yeah unfortunately you're living through history yeah you're living through history right now history the most memorable moments are often the most tragic and that's probably a great note for us to end on with this episode um thanks for joining us and thanks for helping us just beat up Joe Biden for 30 whole minutes. We couldn't, we don't love anything more than that. 
We, it's that's, fun. It's pretty much what we do for a living. And I'll tell you what, it's the best thing in the world. Um, and hey, if you want to support us, if you want to help us tell the truth, because tell you what, you know, NBC News, they may have done this one interview all right. Normally, they're covering for this guy. Normally, most of the establishment outlets, unless they're forced to tell the truth, are going to cover for him as long as that guy is a Democrat. Um, and people like us, you know, we're going to we're going to do our best to give you the truth. And big tech is doing everything it can to restrict that. So if you really want to help us with that, make sure to uh, join the Western Journal at uh, westernjournal.com slash join. Um, get a subscription there. You know, this is this is the future is um, subscription models with um, all kinds of platforms. And we need your help. Uh, you know, a lot of outlets like us depend upon kind of the ad revenue from our stories, from our videos, and Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of those platforms want to take all of it away. You know, they make up all these silly little arguments. They use these super semantical fact checks that just absolutely make no sense. And they use that as an excuse to basically take away money that we earned. So, you know, if you want to help us out, if you want to help us circumvent that, please join us at thewesternjournal.com and, you know, follow us here on YouTube. Uh, youtube.com slash WJ live. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell where anywhere you uh, get your audio podcast, you can listen to this show. And uh, that's about it. So, hey, thank you guys so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.